The Haunted PS1 demo disc is finally here, after several weeks of hype. It's actually been here a while now, but whatever. This neat little doohickey is a collection of indie horror game demos, all styled in one way or another after PlayStation 1 games. Among their ranks, they count Silent Hill, Resident Evil, Fear Effect, and even LSD Dream Simulator among their inspirations. There are 17 demos in all here, so I won't go over all of them. I'll stick to the nine games I enjoy the most, starting with Effigy, my favorite game of the collection. Effigy is a horror-themed first-person shooter along the lines of Dusk, to give a more recent example. There's a big world to explore, complete with several cool, if not exactly original, weapons, power-ups, and even platforming. Combat feels something along the lines of Doom or Dusk. There's not a ton of weight to the shooting, but it's not ultra-fast and loose like in Quake or Unreal either. There's a story going on in the background, but not much is conveyed to the player. It's alluded to that you're in hell trying to find your girlfriend or wife who's being held on top of a mountain, but but that's all you get. That's fine, because the shooting is fun and fast, and while the enemies are super basic, either standing there and shooting you or running towards you with swords, it's still fun blasting a room of demon spawns as you explore this gorgeous world. Set in the Finnish countryside next to a lake, your job in Sauna 2000 is to heat up a sauna before nightfall. It's never explained who you are, why you're heating up a sauna in the middle of the woods in the first place, or why it has to be done before it gets dark, but okay, sure, maybe that's a Finnish thing, I don't know. The esoteric nature of your work is what makes this so intriguing. The game is simple. You first have to find your axe, then split some logs for the fire, bring those logs inside, and I'm not gonna explain the whole process to you. It's fairly benign stuff, but what you'd expect from this sort of game, dare I say. You're not fighting monsters or even solving puzzles, but of course this is a compilation of horror games, so it's not much of a spoiler to say that there's more going on under the surface. Every so often you'll catch something out of the corner of your eye, or sometimes it'll be right in your face for a split second, and once you do finish lighting the fire, something happens that I won't spoil. A big part of what makes the horror work in this game is the humor, breaking up the tension and throwing you off guard. The humor reminds me of My Summer Car, in that its protagonist randomly talks to himself in weirdly translated sentences, there's a guy on the radio talking complete nonsense, and the general idea of having to do some random, overly complicated tasks in the middle of the woods in a Scandinavian countryside. And also, you can poop. I know I said Effigy was my favorite game of the bunch, but I think I changed my mind already. This might be it. Tasty Ramen is a wonderful little horror game in the same vein as Slenderman the Eight Pages or Baldi's Basics. You walk around this ramen shop collecting keys, trying not to get spotted by the sentient bowl of ramen roaming the aisles. As you can see, this game presents itself a little differently than most horror games, foregoing the overly dark hallways and pathetic flashlights that can't illuminate the sun and have a battery lasting five seconds, Tasty Ramen instead opts for the Teletubby strategy of making everything cute, colorful, bouncy, and adorable. The ramen bowl itself is a cute little fella, something you'd expect to see out of one of Otacon's Japanese animes, and the shop itself is equally bouncy and cheerful. Even Five Nights at Freddy's goofy animatronic animals pales in comparison to what Tasty Ramen does with subverting visuals, and it works really well. It's a breath of fresh air for one thing, but it also makes the horror work so much better. You're not expecting a killer bowl of ramen stalking you, so when it does see you and gives chase with a bloody look of murder in its eyes, it's more terrifying because of the surprise. There's not much to this, though. The room is quite small, and all you're doing is picking up keys. I'm not sure how this could be expanded into a full game without major additions to the gameplay, but I'm excited to see what the developer comes up with, especially because the creator of this is also the creator of Firewing 64, a neat 3D platformer that has nothing to do with this video, but it's a 3D platformer, so I have to mention it. Until Big Light is a really fascinating narrative adventure game where you play a mouse trying to earn some money to pay rent. Sorry, earn some cheddar. Sorry again, some cheddar. You walk up to a bartender and ask for a job, and all of a sudden you're sucked into a web of conspiracies, lies, and corruption. It's not long before you realize there's a lot more going on than your landlord wanting some money. Cheddar, sorry. Now, call me crazy here, but I think this game might not actually be about mice and cats and cheese, but hear me out, Jonathan. I think it's an allegory for real-life politics, race, and greed. Yeah, so it's not exactly subtle with its messaging, but the dialogue is sublime, and 
I want to know where the story is heading, though I'm sure its preaching will turn some people off. Once again, I have to commend the demo for its presentation. Until Big Light doesn't go overboard with the PS1 type effects like film grain and static and scan lines that some other games here do, but there is a weird tilted effect where the world looks slightly askew. It threw me off at first, and it took me a while to realize this game was set in a normal field, and we're mice, so everything's really small. It's amazing how this game uses a simple perspective change and some camera effects to unsettle the player and present a normal place in a new light. A big light, you could say. <laughs> hey! Okay. I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what Snowy Castle game is. I said in Indie Games You Missed last week that, as far as I could tell, this game was about wandering around a castle and lighting candles, and I wasn't joking. There really doesn't seem to be any more to this game than that. I'm sure there is, and I'm either missing it or the big twist isn't in this demo, but I played it for a good 15 minutes and nothing happened other than me walking around a whole lot, so... There's definitely a sense of dread in this castle. The darkness, which doesn't go overboard, combined with the lack of music and sound of the wind and the snow coming down makes me think that something's going to jump out at any moment and attack me. Or maybe that's me thinking that because of that guy in Metal Gear Solid near the start of the game scared me as a kid when he said, whose footprints are these, when he saw them in the snow, and ever since, snow scenes in early 3D low poly games have always scared me. That's a completely random off-topic thing. I don't know why I said that. It's the atmosphere that really draws me in, though. Despite being a horror game, or featured in a collection of horror games at least, I found Snowy Castle game really comforting. I don't have to save the world, or fight monsters, or make world-altering decisions. All I have to do is walk around a castle, and outside it, lighting some candles. I'm sure nothing bad will happen once I light them all, so yeah, good comfy game this. Ode to a Moon is a psychological horror game that's more eerie than horrific. It's a subtle kind of horror where there aren't any monsters jumping out at you, just a mystery to solve and a lot of weird perspective shifts, time jumps, and other strange going-ons that you can't explain. The Itch.io page refers to this game as a psychotronic adventure. If you don't know what psychotronic means, which I definitely do and didn't have to look it up, it refers to a genre of movies with a sci-fi, horror, or fantasy theme that were made on a low budget and received poorly by critics. It can also refer to a branch of paranormal science. As described by the United States Paratronics Association, yes, that's a real thing, the study, research, and applications of the physics and technology of the mind, brain, spirit, consciousness, and the underlying forces of life and nature. So it's a polysemic that works really well at describing what Ode to a Moon is. Not that this is a bad game or poorly received, far from it. It's just kind of got that 80s B-movie sci-fi horror aesthetic, kind of like Evil Dead before the series went all in on the cheesiness. The page also gives you far more detail than the, the Itch.io page, not the United States Paratronics Association. As photojournalist for a popular tabloid, you're tasked with covering a fall festival in a faraway rural town during a centennial lunar eclipse. Camera in hand, you set off to that romantic hamlet only to discover the macabre fallout of a town's descent into madness. It was inspired by real events and the belief that truth is stranger than fiction. Not really sure what real events they are referring to, but maybe it's best we don't know. Dread Delusion is a fantastic open-world exploration RPG, complete with spells, items, dialogue options, and NPCs to talk to. I got an Oblivion meets Dark Souls vibe from this game, and when I say Dark Souls, I mean in terms of the narrative and the presentation of said narrative, not the difficult combat, because as far as I can tell, there is no combat here. You play a loyal subject in a totalitarian kingdom run by some kind of clockwork god. Lucky you is chosen to perform the sacramental duty of ridding the land of corruption. However, you're not the first to be given this quest, and no one else who's undertaken this duty has survived to tell the tale, or succeeded. The clockwork god itself expects you to die, giving you zero chance of completing succeeding. Why did I write that? You choose your vocation at the start, a scribe to be all smart-like, or an enforcer to be good at punching things, so maybe there will be combat at some point. Other than that, you don't know what's going on or what you're supposed to do, a running theme in almost all of these games. You're left to wander on your own to figure things out yourself. Unlike some other games in this compilation, though, you can start piecing stuff together, and this is where the Dark Souls influence comes in. There's a complicated backstory involving gods, demons, spells, Bells, people breaking the law of an oppressive government, subjugation, a plague, a marginalized group of native people
people that were cast out of society, all of which already happened decades ago, so you can only really see remnants of this past through brief glimpses and notes and things like that. You know what? Screw Sauna 2000 and Effigy. This is my favorite game of the bunch. Maybe. Heartworm is a third-person puzzle exploration game where you play Sam, a young woman who's traumatized by something in her past. She sent a VHS and decides to immediately put it in her VCR, although you're the one doing it, so I guess we're the idiots, and she's transported to some place. You explore this little area with a house, a backyard, and a garage, solving puzzles that lead to new areas, all while putting the pieces of Sam's past together and figuring out what's going on. This is yet another game that doesn't make anything clear from the start. Art. But like Dread Delusion, you do find clues and hints scattered throughout that let you fill in some of the picture. And like many other third-person games on this demo not disc, it's got tank controls a la Resident Evil. In fact, the presentation is very reminiscent of Resident Evil, with the fixed camera, the character models, level design, and music, though it's a lot more subtle. Also, like many other games on this not disc, there aren't any monsters jumping out at you yelling boo and no guns to shoot off. It's more of an exploration of a woman's grief through puzzles and literal exploration, and I appreciate its laid-back approach. In Fatim Batula, don't know how to pronounce that, you have total control over how all life and all that's ever existed goes. You do this with three vials, collecting various liquids that you can pour into this pool of water in a temple that feeds this tree which controls existence. Yeah, it's another weird game that's almost impossible to explain. There are a bunch of weird creatures everywhere, some of whom you can talk to. There's a trippy dream world that you can enter that will give someone a seizure because it's just absurdly over the top with flashing lights and fake graphical glitches, so I'm not even going to show it in this video. It was even making me a little sick, and I never get sick from video games. And you know, I almost didn't include this one on my list, because I just didn't really like it all that much when I first played it, and you know, that dream world thing didn't help. I mean, it's okay, but it doesn't really hold a candle to the others on this list. But I found that it kind of stuck in my mind for some reason, well after I quit playing. There's this general feeling of melancholy in the game, from everyone you speak to, the notes you read, and even the environment itself. Plus there are multiple endings depending on your actions, you can change the world in a bunch of different ways, and the final game will have a lot of areas to explore and some kind of light puzzles to solve. So there is some meat here, it's not all weirdness and sickening visual effects. This isn't a fun game in the traditional sense, it's more about evoking a certain feeling in the player and seeing what you'll do in this weird, sad world. Will you make it better, worse, or end its existence? Better yet, what's the point of any of those options? Or you can take the fourth option, which is to subscribe to my channel and give this video a like. Whoa, we're at the end already, who saw that coming? I implore you to give all of these games a try, even the ones I didn't mention here and don't really like all that much, because maybe you will like them. Probably I'm wrong all the time. Either way, thanks for watching, I'll see you next time.